right answer here would be when you understand whether you made a decision based on what your mind was telling you or when you made a decision based out of your intuition and those moments are clarified so right and wrong doesn't matter either what matters is was a decision done under intuition or was a decision man, done under a mind uh, conflict and that's clarifying so uh, here it's, uh, it's part of why we chose to come here we chose to come here because it's fun that was a, the biggest part that they were working on me or that entity was working on me on we were healing and accepting the fact of fun of just staying on the higher vibration of fun you immediately thoughts have a different vibration and you immediately create heaven on earth because the, the notion of creating heaven on earth was being input very strongly in me through that entity it was a, a this heavenly space you see this heavenly feeling you see this heavenly way you see how you think of things that they come you see how you how this is loving you see how beautiful this is the same can be down there that so so that message was being very very strongly put you got to accentuate the positive wow i feel good a bit of feel that goes a long way you're listening to Karen Swain, teacher of deliberate creation, accentuating the positive, showing you a way to a better life. Accentuating the positive, it's not just bad, it's sanity. Who in their right mind would accentuate anything else? If you feel like that's what you want to do. Hello and welcome to another show, Accentuating the Positive with Karen Swain. Always a blessing to be with you all. Here we are. We're on the ocean today. <laughs> Sal's having a bit of a meditation there. <laughs> We've got the wonderful and gorgeous Salvatore Adazzi with us to share his experience. Welcome, Sal. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you so much for the invitation. And please remember, if you're liking the shows, to share, share, share with your friends and, well, with people that you don't know. Share it on your social media and give us a comment. Let us know what you think. Press that like button, press the bell button, the subscribe button, all that st stuff. You've heard it a million times from every podcaster I know, just to remind you. So Sal has an amazing experience. I found Sal on the wonderful Jeff Mara podcast and I just loved your story for a couple of reasons, actually, because you're a sailor and you're out to sea and my daughter's a sailor and she's always out to sea. So I really related the ocean, the connection through the ocean and because of your story and, and how your story unfolded and what it means to us, to humanity. So we're going to explore that today. I was just saying to Sal that my daughter's out to sea and he said to me, oh, I used to date an Australian girl that was a sailor. <laughs> Maybe I'm speaking to her mother, <laughs> but it wasn't the same girl. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. We, we would still have a happy chat. So that's why I'm really, we, the chat would be fr as friendly as it can be. So that's great. That's great news. So let me tell you a little bit about Sal. Yacht captain, freelance pirate and cosmic channel, Salvador Adazzi was born and raised in Portugal. He's a professional yachts captain who experienced two profound NDEs as a young man at 27. His experience gave him many understandings of how this earth life operates and changed his life forever. Growing up, Sal experienced the ups and downs of life, as many of us do. As a child, his curiosity put him in touch with the nature of reality in ways that are truly unique. When he was a teenager, Salvador jumped into an eye-opening but ultimately debilitating relationship with psychedelics and alcohol. After experiencing life on the fringe of existence, years of drugs and alcohol led to something inconceivable for any young man, a deadly heart attack, which resulted in his NDE experiences, near-death experiences. After leaving his body, Sal relived his entire life story in the spiritual realms with the guidance of an unusual acquaintance. He gained unimaginable knowledge while hovering between the spiritual and physical worlds. Sal became a new man, 
earning him the nickname Captain Hart, which is the title of his autobiography penned under the name George Adazzi. Sal returned to the physical realm wiser, more informed and ready to share his knowledge with humanity. His commitment to his life led him to his amazing career skippering and sailing yachts all around the world. From beautiful locations, beautiful women, yachts, money, love, pain, suffering, grief, loss, to death and the afterlife, Sal's book, Captain Hart, is a true story of many lives lived in one. Well, let's get into it. So tell us what happened to you during, you know, when you had your heart attack as a young man. Well, Karen, first, thank you so much for that beautiful intro. That's beautiful. I, I'm going to save that. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. Um, it was incredibly, as you said, it's, 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 it's an incredible experience and mostly because you never lose uh, consciousness of what we consider reality and what we consider being alive. Um, we never lose sight with that. We never, we never lose sight or touch. We never lose touch with, uh, with life. So, you know, we're not dreaming. We know we're not hallucinating. Uh, this was, I was four years into rehab. I, I was clean and sober. This was, you know, it was, was just a a very, very stressful period of my life. But uh, as as I have the heart attack and as I separate, and first you get that shocking understanding, but it's not shocking for too long. It's it's for a fraction of a second. Uh, Because while you transition, I would say, through that veil, and then immediately you're reunited with yourself and, and, and you feel amazingly, but as you know from, from, from many uh, stories, the feeling is so pure and so intensely beautiful and, and pure and, 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 and abundant that you immediately feel well. You forget all your troubles of the physical existence. So all of that stuff, all the problems disappear immediately. And the excitement that you're still alive <laughs> is just <laughs> undeniable. You're like, well, <laughs> this is great. I just left the body, but life continues. So life continues. And so there's that blissful state of just, just an acceptance and understanding and a being, just being. You're just being. You're just, you're just flowing. You're just being. And... And yeah, and uh, and then we started, and then the entity started, jumped on, and started with information. How did the entity present themselves to you? Did they look like a light? Did they look like a humanoid form? What was your experience of the entity? It's a huge light, as a light, um, as a torch, as a, just a coming closer and closer and closer just coming like a a ray of light and when it comes it's huge it's beautiful it's like three feet away from me it's not just the light itself it's the value that comes with it the 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 the, the, the electromagnetic the vibrational the the soul the, the 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 essence the essence of it that you feel with that light the 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 identity of the light that everything comes with it it's not just a color it's it's what it brings what it means what it is how it comes through you how you feel who you are in the same uh, language how you in the same essence let's say because now i'm i'm also made of uh, i'm 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 on my spiritual uh, let's call it spiritual body only or i'm i'm only energetical I, i'm not physical and I can see it. I, I see myself. I feel myself. I feel my, my size, my, my, my vibration, my, my state, my essence, my identity. And that, uh, on that other side of the veil, which uh, I think that there's, st- there's still some words that don't exist to explain 50% of what's lived on that side. I still believe even now us, as much as we try to, to dig and to speak about this, which is amazing, 
there's still some <laughs> words still to be invented and understood to have full understanding. But yes, the, it was in light. And then you, you understand, I understood, uh, um, and this was before I, I did research on these matters, but then I found many uh, similar stories and similar ways to explain it. Uh, but at the time, you understand immediately that that light, that source of light comes from somewhere. It's kind of looking for a way to communicate, kind of seeing which door can I open that you understand what I want to say. That, 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 that's the feeling that you immediately, like creating a rapport with you, like see, okay, what do we have in common? Where can we line up? But uh, we was very fast. We went straight in uh, and accepted. I've accepted everything that I was, I was not fighting. I was, I was happy to be there. I was happy that I was not dead after all. <laughs> And, and and everything that was coming was way better than me the feeling was amazing the knowledge was amazing so i was like yes okay let's let's talk and then i believe because of my catholic uh, uh growth or, or as i was educated as a child as a catholic going to church every sunday and all that sort of stuff my mind brought us or, or what i saw at my interpretation was the, a god figure like so there was no, there was just some uh, outlines of, of uh, an elderly person in a white vest, in a white beard, in a white hair, in a all elderly. Basically, what that essence meant to me was a very elder and experienced and knowledgeable entity. And my way of visualize, of giving it a form is by shaping it close to my image of God. If I would ever meet God, well, what would God look like? So I don't know who it was still. Doesn't matter. I'm not worried. That's the face I gave it, I guess. You know, I hear a lot of people speaking about meeting an entity when they cross over, when they have an NDE. And uh, many of them through their religious upbringing call it God. Uh, like there is some being outside of themselves that is coming to meet them. And I always think that they're meeting the, the divine essence of themselves, that their higher self is projecting who you are, basically, who we are, who we all are. It's that, is that God essence that we are and, you know, that meets, that meets the small self, the big self meets the small self. And we see it as this God entity, but it's us. <laughs> yeah. It's us. You know, it's yeah. us that's all knowing all seeing, all knowing, infinite intelligence, infinite possibility, infinite creative potential. It's us. It's who we are. And what did the entity say to you? And you, you do get that as a fact. Uh, you, you do get that, what he just described as uh, I am you, you are me, um, and here we are again. That's kind of the feeling that you get because, you, because it's, it's everything and it, it everything makes sense and everything it's it it is and and then we went straight to the to the to the life review to my life review and it was beautiful we went we went to my life review uh, because that was my immediate question what do you notice on on the other side as i'm sure you know too it's just like any once you have a question um, you get the answer. So there's many questions that are being answered at the same time because every second you get the answer. So you jump to the next one. So you jump to the next one. So there was a lot of like, if, if you get into a new room that you've never been before and you have your blindfolded, so you're looking at the place, oh, okay, I know where the table is and I know where, okay, okay. So that there was that moment of situating of, of understanding where we were where I was or what was going on in there. And then once I understood as soon as I had a, a new question, which was basically, oh, where are we? What am I doing here? Where am I? What's going on? Uh, what's next? I understand that, uh, okay, I left the planet. And, and we went to the life review and, and, and then we paused it. We started going from my birth to just going through 
it was like a screen between us. So the entity was still there. The life review was an invisible screen, just came in here, was passing through very clearly. And it was not just images, it was as if we could go to that present moment and feel exactly what I was feeling in that day, in that moment, in that place, what I was thinking, but not just myself, what others, what the people involved in that situation, uh, what they were thinking and believing and what was going on. So with the understanding, the understanding of beliefs and thoughts causing that every scene that happened and that we could access it and understanding that what we consider a problem was not a problem, but our thoughts about it were the problem. And so, so that's how we paused it. Uh, many times we paused. The, 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 uh, there was a moment I said, okay, pause there. Well, okay, because this moment is very confusing in my life. I want to know what was this. And, and the entity starts explaining and, 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 uh, and everything makes sense. It gives more information. I understand better. I understand, oh, obviously I decided that way. Of course, I, uh, that was the best decision that I knew at the time. That was, that was my best thinking at the time, of course. <laughs> so, okay, let's move on. And so we did a life review, was, it was a very thorough life review um, of this experience, of this, of this uh, current visit. And, and everything was being answered. And as, as it is being answered, not only the process of forgiveness, of unconditional love, of judgments, uh, those things get swapped immediately. You know, immediately you're in an uh, unconditional love position and immediately you are in an understanding uh, of all position and everything that is judgmental, everything that it's humanish disappears completely. But then you understand it as well and you accept it as part of, because at the, at the, when I left the planet, I could see the planet and it was like, you could see clearly that it's like a sandbox or it's like an attraction park an attraction park is there if you want to get in those are the rules once you're inside just go crazy but uh, if you want to get in this is this this is how it works and we accept it so but it's so easy on the other side to not judge uh, people's actions and people's intentions and people's ideas and it's so easy so um Yeah, that's how it was until we got the end of the uh, until we got to the end where I was there laying on the floor, uh, and now I was up there. <laughs> so it's so easy, you say. It's so easy not to judge people's actions and people's. It's so easy not to judge. What was one of the most profound things you experienced during the life review? So at this point, you had already gone through the drug haze days, the drug haze days. So um, and then you were you had been clean and sober for a few years, you had obviously looked back on those decisions that you'd made to get out of it, to take drugs, you know, like you'd made some seemingly poor decisions from our perspective, not from that perspective. What insights did you learn about yourself looking back at that? I was exploring, I was expanding. Uh, okay, I don't know. I'm not saying to everyone, go outside and use drugs. Let's be clear. I'm not saying... Uh, go be a junkie no by all means no don't do that follow your heart the heart center meditate find what brings you peace and joy and do it but the fact is at that time in my life uh, I was doing what I wanted I, I needed to know more about uh, some I was I was a child but no I was a curious child uh, since I was born. I would stare at the sky at night for ages. I would see strange things and lights. And I, would, uh, I had episodes of seeing ghosts, people that just deceived, that they just died, and then they came and showed up to me. They were never very close to me, but they were very close to people that were close to me. But they were never, the people that, the ghosts that came to me, were people that I had no attachments at all, or no any kind of, I knew them, I knew them, but I had nothing, you know, some people, you know, and you have nothing against or in favor, they're nice, we're civilized, that's fine. 
So that was this type of ghost I would see. None of the, there was no personal attachments. So I was doing what I wanted. I felt I was a child. Not only I was interested in nature and space, I was always, always, always looking at space and looking at nature, looking at space, looking at nature. Uh, I was maybe what you could consider an annoying child because I was not stopped. I wouldn't stop, but I was always curious. And also besides that, I was uh, when I started growing up, I had a, this calling, this feeling about the 60s that uh, it was an unfinished business, that there was a lot of information and a lot of knowledge in there and a lot of learning that uh, was not being either used or explored or clarified. And so my attraction to the 60s drove me to the drugs. Obviously, my experience with the drugs and mostly being psychedelics and the funny thing is psychedelics today are finally accepted and considered a medicine. At the time, they weren't. So I, I know I did nothing wrong. I was doing what I needed to do at the time that I needed to do it. I was, clean, I was clearing up my mind. I was uh, now like everything, like the same as alcohol. Uh, it, and, and alcohol is not seen like, which is a problem. But... Um, Alcohol is widely accepted, but you can destroy your life on alcohol. And it's something that people accept, but you can destroy it. So I'm not an advocate to, to, uh, to, to, to I'm not saying go on. But it, the life review allowed me to see where I lost track, wh when the drugs were being beneficial to me, and which ones, which ones were actually helping me on my natural curiosities, on my natural choices for this time around that I chose to come to the planet. Uh, also, you can connect it to parallel existences or to what we call past lives or my nature, my essence, my, uh, the way that you and I and everyone is part of the same and we're all the same and I could consider this talking to myself or you talking to yourself uh, and we're all the part of one and... and uh, the same way that we, that we can understand that, we all also have our own essence and our own uh, curiosities and our own intentions and our own areas of growth that we want to explore. And mine are very connected with that. And psychedelics were a very strong um, uh, part of it because they, they were. But I'm not saying go do the drugs. I'm not, I'm not sure who's listening to your podcast, but. Uh, <laughs> You're worried people are going to go, great, let's go get, get out of it after listening to this. <laughs> no, you're right. Psychedelics do have become medicine. I mean, there's just so much going on, especially in the younger generation with the ayahuasca, mushroom journeys and, you know, toad poisons and all sorts of things, a rape and all sorts of things are happening. People are taking all these drugs and poisons to sort of open their mind and experience an expanded reality. But it's it, today it's done in sacred ceremony and with shamans and healers. And it's not seen as a party thing. It's seen as an as an expansion on the spiritual journey, which is kind of beautiful, which is, you're right, like they they kind of started that in the 60s, right? And, um, yeah, they started that in the 60s, but it got really all shut down. I, I, it really got shut down and alcohol took over as the as the legal drug, uh, you know, that, uh, you know. And so it's changing. And, and, and on that subject, the fact that... Uh, and now being in the States, I've been in the States now for three years. And the fact that you can see that, uh, well, Australia is a huge country too. It's, it's the, Australia is huge. But, but the fact that they have so many different states here and the fact that uh, one state decides to vouch that this is legal and the other one says this is not. And, this, right. and seeing and understanding how vibrations and thoughts and intentions, because everything is possible, and seeing them flourish like a garden of, and its flowers and everything is fine. If they consider that weed is uh, marijuana, it's legal there and it's okay and it's good for them, then be it. Let them do what they're doing. They're, they're exploring the same that you are exploring, but you are on the whatever side and you believe that what you do, as long as you believe that what you're doing 
then it's fine. So, well, there's there's a couple of different intentions behind drug taking. Uh, one is curiosity, like you you said that you were curious and you um you wanted to see what happened and what you would experience. And and another is like I'm depressed and I want to get out of this world. I want to get out of it. I want to get away from my life. I want to get away from my thoughts. So, were you taking drugs? like for both those reasons or more for the curiosity? Oh, no, the first few years was totally, I would, I jokingly called myself a scientist. I always said I'm doing this in the name of science because I was getting a lot of information and I was getting a lot of um, excitement out of it. And I was getting a lot of, uh, you know, when you have a calling to do something and then you do it. And the better way that you feel better is better than the other ways that you feel better when you, do something that you intuitively don't feel so attracted to but you do it anyway so uh, i was out of excitement and learning and excitement and learning and evolution and uh, beliefs i was changing beliefs i was uh, i was growing but then yes if you get onto hard drugs and uh, which i did and then it takes you on to an escape route and then you, yes, I did. It's funny that you don't see it on the life review. You don't see it as wrong. You don't see it as wrong because we, I know, like every addict knows, I know the moment that you have a choice. I know when you're on the street. I know when you don't have money. I know when you're starving. I know when you're in pain. I know we always have a choice. You always have a choice. And we are free to have a child to, to, to follow our choices. And that's part of the rules. We go back to the attraction part. That's part of the rules here. You are free to make choices. So PT disappears also. Um, whatever reason. So yeah, I did my choices at some point to escapism, and then your mind gives you justifications, and then addiction becomes an addiction and does become a monster because it will find ways for you to keep doing what you're doing. Um, But I was, but at the same time, and thanks to psychedelics, uh, it's pretty obvious, that's the power of psychedelics, it's pretty obvious when something is good and when something is not good. So I accepted help, I searched, I asked for help and I have accepted it and I came out of it. So I could see but I also could see that I left in the right moment. I left drugs in the right moment. And I believe it's the same through every drug addict that goes. Uh, and I think that's the problem with alcohol because it's so legal. People don't push alcoholism out of their lives so easily as they push uh, uh, drugs. But anyway, I think we're going off topic. I don't know if this answered your question. But at well, some point, the, the last years of my drug dependency was a nightmare. The last two years were a nightmare. Were a nightmare. No, not fun. So yeah. everyone believes that kind of follows the religious route, that when we make wrong decisions here on earth, um, when we hurt each other or hurt ourselves, that there was, there'll be some punishment or retribution or some payback or some karma that we have to like live or overcome from your experience. I know you're shaking your head from your experience with your guide and or your higher self or whatever you want to call it. And uh, your life review, what did you experience when you looked upon those wrong decisions? Like if you smoked yourself to death and got emphysema and died or, you know, like what, what were they sort of showing you around that? They were not mistakes. They were not wrong decisions. Every, well, decisions have consequences and they're not right or wrong. Uh, if for us here with the five senses, yes, we can consider right and wrong. But from the other side, uh, I did have a growth and a learning of some. The right answer here would be when you understand whether you made a decision based on what your mind was telling you or when you made a decision based out of your intuition. And those moments are clarified. So right and wrong doesn't matter either. What matters is, was a decision done under intuition or was a decision done under a mind uh, conflict? And that's clarifying. So uh, that's what was the importance of it, was to understand 
when I was acting out of my intuition. When I say my intuition, we go back to, I know that my intuition comes from the same entity that was speaking with me, comes from the same uh, realm or the same origin, let's say. It's, it's all come from the same origin, and that's the way that it speaks to me, it's from my heart. And so understanding the, the decisions that I made with my mind and the decisions I made with my heart, that was the important part. Because it's not like they're wrong automatically because you do it with your head. It's not like that always, but, <laughs> but almost. It was kind of the learning that, uh, yeah, don't rush decisions with your head. Center yourself first. Learning to be in a state of the blissful light that we are and the blissful gods or God experience itself or uh, brothers and sisters or experiences of God that we are. But as long as we are tuned in to that vein uh, that comes from its origins and we made decisions out of them, then we're fine. Then we could. There's no wrong decisions. There's no wrong. The other ones, yeah, they upset at someone. Yeah, you know, but you're going to upset people in life anyway. So there was no right and wrong. Well, what about when people are murdering other people? Like, you know. Well, so understanding that I'm here, and then I was lucky enough to, 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 to rejoin with the, the other part of me. You know, I understood that too in first hand. I understood that when, when I had out of my body and, and, um, and met myself and then met that entity and then rejoined with, with myself. Understanding that very, very, very clearly that it's only a part of me that got sent to the earth that comes, never disconnects through who I am, but it's like just a little tiny bit of me that comes to the planet and experiences and does things and blah, 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 and goes through life. Um, Sorry, you have to ask me the question again. <laughs> I like this too much and I get <laughs> sidetracked very easily because I love it and I want to give a good answer and I want to give a good reply, but then I know I get sidetracked. Tell me. <laughs> so what about when somebody murders another person? Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Who cares? No, I'm joking. Not like that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. You know, here on well, Earth. We say that that's the most heinous crime that you can do is to murder another person. And then we lock people up in jails forever or we give them the death sentence in the past. I think I don't know if that still goes on in the States, but um, thinking that death would be the worst punishment that you could ever give somebody, which is kind of crazy because then you just return to bliss. Right. So is that a punishment or but we're so caught up on the earth plane in this retribution in this punishment idea you know good bad right wrong you've got it's to part pay. of the game it's part but of the it's game part, it's part of the game you accept it you chose to come to the game so you chose to come to the if you go you chose to go to the roller coaster park to attraction park and you're doing a ride and you vomit it don't blame it on anyone else you chose to go there you chose it's part of it yes now you have to change your shirt or you have to go for a shirt. yes but it's part of it you chose to do it so the, to answer your question, the same way that I understood uh, the whole of me, where the whole of me is connected to, to uh, another uh, fractal existence of uh, entities of, of, of God, like sons of gods and sons of gods and sons of God. They were all God. They were all here. They were all one. But I'm exploring one area because... Uh, let's call it God again, or source, or the origin of everything, or one, this energy, this life force energy wants to know more about that. And I took that job, or I took that, uh, that role, I took that essence. I am the guy that, uh, I, I, I'm the guy that still believes I'm going to see teleportation in my lifetime, this lifetime. I am that sort of guy. So I, 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 my focus, my curiosities have to do with, 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 with the elements and with space and with the telepathy and and ghosts and this has been my interest since I'm since I'm a kid. The way that the world lives, love and compassion, 
how come there's uh, no food for these people, but there's a waste of food over there. Um, my first words when I came out of the hospital, my mom picked me up and then we came out of the, the, the underground park and I see people on the streets, you know, the usual traffic, people crossing the roads, people in traffic. And this image of how humans are living today, I immediately said to my mom, mom, I'm not going to live like this. I, I tell you right now, I know I was a junkie before, and I, but, but listen, I'm not getting into this. We are not here for this. This is not the way to live. This was the first words I said out of the hospital to my mom. I said, mom, this is not the way to live. You see this? This is, throw it all off. This is wrong. That, that, that there can be free energy, that can be free food, that can be a bunch of stuff. Yes, there can still be a monetary system. Yes, there can be, but this is Stone Age material. What we're doing now, this is Stone Age compared to what we can do. So, so. But at the same time, that I get the more knowledge about me and how I evolve, I also get the acceptance of, and the knowing of others, also sons of gods, and also sons that comes of the same source that I come. Their life expressing itself and life learning about itself. And, and they're their own, on their own thing they're on their own thing now here we cannot see the whole picture of a murderer as you said a murderer is that right or wrong here yes of course it's wrong of course it's wrong but we don't know how we don't know all of the consequences of that situation for the families of either for the people involved in it. We don't know enough of the whole game to spend time judging. Basically, that's why I said, who cares? Okay, yes, I don't want to sound wrong, but there's no benefit in dwelling on it. The more you think about somebody being murdered, I don't want to think about it. Because somebody might just be murdered right now just because I thought about it. That's how powerful our thoughts are and people don't believe. That's why I don't even want to think about it. No, I don't want to debate about death and killing because I know I'm feeding it. I'm creating another one. That's how much I learned about the power of thoughts. I don't want to talk. I'm... There's space for it. There's freedom for it. There's, there's lessons with it and there's growth with it. And there's solutions with it that you cannot see from our five senses. It's going to be painful for a family, yes, but what they're going to learn, it's going to be painful for the guy who robbed them or shot him, yes. It's part of their process, and their process is part of our process, and we're on the same planet. So for us to evolve, it's part of it. I think you just learn to accept that it's just part of it. It's part of the game here. At least this is, the, this is how I came out of it. Yeah. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. In uh, one of Garnet Schulhauser's books, I actually put this chapter in a book that I put out called Awakened by Death. There is a story of him being on the other side and he witnesses a psychic reading from the spirit side. And, um, and the psychic reading was with a little girl who had been abducted and raped and murdered like she was like nine or ten. Uh, and the parents who were devastated and didn't believe in anything psychic or woo-woo, um, reached out to a psychic in their, in their pain to have some relief for the, from their pain. And the little girl from the spirit side was saying, don't get caught up on the way that I died. Um, the reason that you experienced this murder was it was um, your soul's desire to experience commitment and so could the two of you stay together and commit to each other through this heinous act? And so there was this beauty to the heinous act. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, from the spirit side, just like you say, the little girl was not upset that she was raped and murdered. Um, and, yeah, there was no retribution. And But there was these huge lessons. One, it opened their hearts and it opened their minds to 
um, to this conversation because they were completely close to it. And then there was this journey of commitment that could they could they experience this pain and stay committed to each other. Yeah, it's 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 amazing how much beauty is inside the horror that we experience here on Earth, really, isn't it? And they'll understand that uh, she uh, volunteered or offered herself. Mm -hmm. uh, I forgot the age that you said that she was. Uh, she was little, she like with. nine or ten or something. Uh, little, yeah. even so. Uh, everything well that was agreed before that was agreed mm -hmm. before there was that you accept uh, it's okay so for this happen it's like building a house or it's like building a boat it's like going anywhere it's like making a road trip okay uh, so for this to happen oh we're going to need that piece who can bring that piece that little girl she says no i'll take that piece i'll do that i'm, I'm doing nothing now uh, i'm in between jobs or whatever yeah i'll do that i'm available it's it's all the understanding on the other side that everything works for itself everything works for itself there's no right and wrong except when you're here with the five senses of the information that we have mm -hmm. and i'm not saying that i don't suffer <sighs> actually these days it's weird because uh, my dearest grandmother passed away almost two years now or a year and a half year and a bit and i've lived with her i was very close to her it was uh, the biggest part of me was so happy because she was suffering in the end the last six months she could walk by herself she, you know she was old she started losing senility and making sense uh, and the greatest part of me was so excited and so happy because I know where she's going. I was like, oh, wow, you're going. Ah, it's, it's going to be so, you're going to love it. It's, oh. And I knew she, that she was uh, angry that her body now was not working. Uh, angry that she couldn't make sense. And then, because uh, you can understand, right? When you, when you get close to people. So, and was I sad that I lost? the physical contact and connection with my grandmother of course i did because she was such a beautiful person and knowledgeable and and you know it's of course it's painful on this side if i get in touch with the the other part of me i i i know she's well i know she's happy i know she's not there i know she's evolving i know she found new things to do i know the excitement of being on the other side so I guess that's the reason. No, I don't know if that's the reason. But it's part of the game. It's just part of the game. What did they show you about the power of your thoughts when you were going through the life review and speaking with your exalted wisdom? <laughs> Our thoughts going to matter for the, the, the mind over matter completely clearly in a way that I would like to be able to explain from the moment we started communicating and and because as I grew up I've always believed in telepathy everyone knows Tele today telepathy is not a mystery it's not a uh, in the 90s it was still a discussion you could be labeled as a nutcase if you say oh no I do telepathy oh I can communicate with people you know uh, but at the same time that you understand how information goes uh, telepath te te telepathically with that um, and how on the life review too, when we made pauses and we focused on something, when we focused on something, it stopped being a screen and went to like a matter again, like the, the moment again. So, and then it dissolves and then when once we passed all of that and and i had more questions not just that on the life review seeing where i was making decisions why i was making decisions you could see how thoughts have their own current and their own energetic value because that was thoughts that were making me do decisions and that's part of the game again we have a mind that let us do decisions and but seeing those thoughts as actually colorful energetic lines of electromagnetic 
is existence. Saying the thought is what exists. The thoughts exist. Us choosing to think about them or not, it's only going to give them power or not. So that was being explained like as an obvious, as we're trying to explain social or uh, emotional conflicts. So that part of the obvious just goes. And then when I started asking questions directly, I could see my question, the thought, the color of the thought, the, the, the energetic signature or the, the explanation coming. Uh, I, I was thinking each time I would just thinking, okay, what about this scenario? And seeing the mechanism of, okay, that scenario, both of us focusing on that scenario, the scenario was over there, thoughts, energy, matter, how it creates into matter. So it was, it, it was just too obvious and too clear and too satisfying. And because I felt at the time that um, my anger was, or my bad, what was called poor decision was basically caused uh, by thoughts. Uh, so I guess my constant asking of, about thoughts and uh, had to do with it because, you know, if, if thoughts construct things, if we construct things, if we build things, then you're telling me that all of us are there together, each one trying with the same power of trying to construct something. Yeah, that's basically what it is. We're all here, we're all free, and we all have the power to, 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 to build, to build out of thoughts. And yeah, there was more. There was the emotion. When the emotion is attached to a thought, and how it changes color, and it changes strength, and it changes power, how, how dedicated focus, how almost like like you could build, it's a known fact these days, but it's also like if you want to make a road and you can build it yourself, you can build it yourself. And you, it's by thoughts that you're going to build it. It's by thinking in, into existence. And that was like an obvious explanation. It was like too clear and too obvious. It was Well, many people believe that how we build stuff into existence is through our action. So it's through, like, if you want to make a road, you have to go out there and mix the tar and lay it on the road and make a road. But you're saying that we build things through our thoughts. Do you want to elaborate on that some more? Yes. Yes. Because I'm also, as I said in the beginning, I'm a very uh, physical person. I love to do things. I love to build things. I love to, uh, I'm on the ocean. I'm, I always have something to do. You know, the, the, and I love doing physical things. I love experiences. I love the physical experience. I like the physical action, which is part of the game, which is part of why we chose to come here. It's, it's part of why we chose to come here. We chose to come here because it's fun. That was a, the biggest part that they were working on me or that entity was working on me. On, we were healing and accepting the fact of fun, of just staying on a higher vibration of fun immediately thoughts have a different vibration and you immediately create heaven on earth because the, the notion of creating heaven on earth was being input very strongly in me through that entity it was a, a this heavenly space you see this heavenly feeling you see this heavenly way you see how you think of things when they come you see how you how this is loving you see how beautiful this is the same can be down there that so so that message was being very very strongly put Basically, you can carry this down. You can, you know, this is an open road and you can, doing physical things, it's part of it. Action is part of it. I still love it. I still love to ride a bicycle. I'm 45 and I love when I pick up a bicycle and go on a bike ride. Isn't it nice? Isn't it good? Feel the wind, get distracted, go through, see the trees and the animals. It's lovely. Physical action is awesome. But Whatever, whatever state, energetical state we are to make 
things. Um, that builds worlds. That builds. That that makes a difference. That the 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 the, the energetic, which are our thoughts. So before the physical action, we go back to mind over matter. That's our thoughts. Our thoughts. There's many ways to, as they say, to skin a cat. Or if there was a problem, how we cross the river. There's many ways. One person might say, let's build the bridge. The other one might say, let's build a dam. And then we can walk it. And somebody else would say, no, just use a stick and jump. So there's many solutions. Whatever solution comes to each depends on their thoughts again. And so our daily life together is built based out of thoughts. Now, if you're asking about actually seeing how dense things becomes with focus, how thoughts become matter, that was incredible. That was incredible. But that started before the life review. We're focused, I was focused on the environment around me, however, on the hard stuff. From the moment that my heart stops, and that's not my focus anymore because I don't have a physical body. That's not my focus anymore. The dissipation of the molecules, the dissipation of the illusion of the physical world, just with me changing the focus out of it, that was the beginning. And this was before the life review. That was the beginning that fight where I was for fighting for survival to hold on to this body and to this world and things were not fuzzy anymore. But then I would quit and fight and let go of this world. I'm not interested in this world. And, and, and I could see energy in the trees. I could see energy in the sand. I could see the wind as energy. I could see everything as energy. Our, our energy is before matter. So this is hard to explain. And I don't know if I'm making much sense, but that message, I got it immediately, how everything is, it's only solids depending on our focus. It's weird. It's like, it's like almost, we could all be in isolated cocoons almost, but we're not. Um, it's focused, it's focused. Of course, you can also ask me, oh, so why don't you focus on $100 million and let the $100 million fall on my floor? right? That would be a great type of focus and great type of uh, thoughts into existence. But that's not part of the rules of this game that we're accepted to come in to. It's not that fast. It's not that quick. It's not that... Um... However, the fact that the biggest satisfaction after I came back, the biggest satisfaction, the biggest joy, the biggest, biggest pleasure is to feel that unconditional love vibration that sources the feeling of our existence that life is let's call it life because that was my my final understanding was that is life i am life you know life it's explaining itself it's growing so then we went to another dimension then we went on uh, understanding how if you have many minds thinking about the one thing that will be faster there'll be uh, are brought into existence uh, but today that's not a mystery anymore there's people getting millions together to meditate for peace there's um, but there's still people watching the news and worried with the war they don't know they keep they're maintaining the war to exist again tomorrow mm -hmm. um, so the process is slow but you have to put the energetic value before the form comes that's the learning you if you put the energetic value of something that it will materialize it will it will it's 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 inevitable and mm -hmm. but the pleasure again the pleasure changes i think after the the, 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 uh, the near that experience what gives you joy and pleasure obviously changes it's different stuff but also, yeah. Okay, so what you're saying is the energetic value behind the thought 
manifests faster or coagulates the molecules into density faster. So um, the more energy behind the thought, the more it brings it into existence, be it good or bad. Is that what you're saying? Of course. Yes. Yes, Mm -hmm. of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. That's why. So the angrier you are at something, uh, the faster you manifest it into your, um, yeah. and yeah. The, more, the more you hate it, the more you hate it, the faster it comes to you, the more you love it, the faster it comes to you because energy is emotion is energy, emotion, it's energy. Uh, and um, so you could see all that happening from the other side. You could see the density, the color, the vibrational frequency yes. of the yes. thought you were like witnessing, you were witnessing what we speak about in deliberate creation. You were witnessing it from a spiritual perspective yeah yes yes understanding um uh, that's exactly it when the density and 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 then he sent me back after a, 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 but then i ended up going back in that day again so i had the same examples twice in the space of three hours no the second time that i went was in the space of one hour so, so he sent you back to your body and you found yourself back focused in your body. And yeah. then, and then you left your body again and you kind of went back afterwards. Like, uh, well, that was like an hour later because uh-huh. I was far in the countryside and, uh, and then, you know, first get to the medical center, which was 15, 20 minutes away. And then the medical center wanting to find out if I was having a relapse and an overdose on something so they didn't want to give me painkillers um, but so when they said when I could speak and I asked I said I'm in pain you need to give me something and and they looked at me and said no uh, I said I don't have time for this I'm out I'm out of this body again I don't have time for you guys for humans again I was like oh no damn it <laughs> Get me out of here, these silly humans. I'm out of here. I know where I'm going this time, so I'm not going to struggle to stay alive. I'm just yes. like, I'm out of here. And so that was focus. That was conscious focus. So you that focused. Was, be, you focused on getting yes. out of your body. Yeah. Because it didn't send me back. It didn't send me back. It didn't uh-huh. tell me, oh, you have to go back. Boom. It was after we had a long conversation. I felt I was there for two, three hours speaking with them. And mm-hmm. then the doctors from the size of my scar on my heart they said, well, uh, you lost this amount of muscle, which means uh, this was happening through this amount of time. They say there was 30 to 35 minutes uh, on the floor. I felt like two hours. But we had this huge, long conversation, questions and different worlds and, and understanding reality and understanding focus. And there was, uh, there was so much happening. Uh, but when we reach a point of, okay, so what's going to be because then I was very happy on being on the other side. I was loving being there. And I was like, wow, uh, seeing other souls, seeing behind this conversation and looking and feeling it and feeling the possibility that everything's possible and nothingness is possible and you can choose whatever you want to experience. Basically, we reached that moment of our conversation of, okay, what's your choice now? What do you want to experience? And part of me was still, oh, I think I'd still like to go back. Uh, you know, I'm not finished. Uh, uh, so these conclusions are very quickly understood by both of us. So we both realize, oh, do so you want to go back? Yes, yeah, I'd like to go back. Oh, you want to go back? Yeah, okay, great. Then you're going to go back. And I remember looking down again, looking, searching for the planet the planet was smaller than the grain of sand it's planet was small 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 and we were like okay i go back then okay go back you go back so okay i look at it i look at my look at the planet i look at the planet coming closer i look at my body on the floor so this is focus this is what i chose to we consciously decided that i'm going to focus on my body on earth at this moment now like, I'm done with this conversation. Uh, we go, I'm going to go focus on my body. And I went and focused on my body. And there I was in pain, struggling to the ambulance, to call assistance, to call to the hospital. When things didn't go well, 
And I said, okay, I'm, I'd rather put my focus over there uh, again. And I immediately went. Immediately. There was, I didn't have to ask permission. I didn't have to ask anything to anyone. I went when I chose. I said, okay, I'm off. Whew. Back again, light. Kind of. <laughs> and that was the short one. That was a short talk. And... That's when they shocked me the first time. And, and then I remember they brought me to life, to, to the body. They brought my conscious back to the body. I don't know. I look at the entity. I, the feeling was that one was like, bloody hell, you know, that's, that's like monkeys. I don't know. I was upset. And, and it was a feeling of, okay, now let's do it again. That's, I want to go back. I don't know. It was very quick. It was shorter time, but but I woke up with with them bringing him back to life. And I said, "You need to give me the painkillers." I said, "Okay, okay, okay." They gave me the painkillers immediately. I said, "Ah, oh, okay." I said, "No, I didn't take drugs. I'm not having an overdose. <sighs> but I don't need to have pain. Just you know." Yeah, I do know. Actually, I was given this lesson about focus um, during a during a out of body experience at night where I was in another realm. It's a longer story than I have time for it to. And I felt like uh, I was in one place, and then I was in back in my room, like instantly. And um, I saw the matrix of life. I saw everything as see through and energy, and you know. And I said to my guides afterwards, you know, I didn't feel like I travelled anywhere. And they said to me, yeah, you don't really travel through time and space. You just focus. You're either focused here or you're focused there. And depending where you put your focus is, is what you will experience. They said like, like a camera, you know, if you point the camera in this direction, you'll see what you're looking at. But if you point it in that direction, that thing doesn't ex cease to exist. It's still there, but you're now looking at something else. So they were giving me this lesson about our focus and how our focus creates our reality. Yeah, look, there's so much, where are we? Well, there's so much to talk about in your NDE. I could talk about this all day, the focus and thoughts and because I just love it. Um, and, you know, how the more people focus on one thought, the stronger it is. And like you talked about mass meditation and, and this is what the news does. It presents bad news and then people all around the world are focused on the bad news and now we're recreating it, like you said, the war. We're just recreating it and recreating it because we're all focused in this one direction. But can we focus on can we focus on the bad news or what we see as bad and see it from a higher perspective? Like see it like the murder, like we went into this with the murder. Can we, can we see the murder as something beautiful rather than something terrible? Why? Because when you focus on it in a way that brings love to it, you transform it like this. Or yeah. not, or not, or if it is what it is, and the best way to eradicate it is to thinking of not on changing something because it exists, but on creating something new. So it's creating more valuable. Mm -hmm. It's more valuable to focus on uh, uh, people, the children laughing with uh, enough food, the clean rivers, the oceans full of fish. You, you, we are doing more and this is why it's hard for me to, to speak with people when when they when we go this road it's because i know this is a fact because i saw it uh, i'm more valuable to what we can call a new earth or the next evolution stage the next generational stage where if i if the world that i want to live in yes the technology is advanced and we can uh, float in silent objects or not or teleport or not there's a lot of greenery, children are happy, families are happy. You do a better job, or I do a better, anyone does a better job against that murder and against that war by focusing on the world that you want to live in. Because if you're trying to solve the murder or trying to heal the murder, you're still making the murder exist. You're still bringing him back to existence. And it's not going to change. He's doing something, is that going to end eventually? Or is he's... he's but again, why would you want to devote time to something that we are considering and agreeing that it's wrong or painful? Why do you want to feed it again another day? Should we discuss it another day? Should we just jump to the next chapter where everyone's happy, where it's a beautiful 
green everywhere. There's plants. There's free food. There's free fruit everywhere. There, there's. Uh, we do better by actually focusing it into existence. Do your goddamn job. Focus into the world you want to see. Forget the mother. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's how usually I end up conversations. <laughs> no, I don't end up like this. I just get up and move before that. I don't get upset anymore. Well, but... I agree with you, but life is determined to thrust in our face everything that's going wrong, you know, through our media outlets, through our social media and our news. It's like, you can ignore it, but it's kind of thrust in your face. Like everyone's talking about the pandemic and everyone's talking about the virus and everyone's talking about the war. And so, you know, you can ignore it and place your focus over there. But, ha but how do you want virus? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to move on from this. Oh, sorry, I'm we, sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm just can, messing it. I'm just messing it. because I, I know. Get I know. It. I get, we can, I get it. we I can get. have this conversation another day uh, in more depth. I'd love to have, I'd love to do that. I'd love to get into this in more depth, but I want to just, you know, finish your NDE. So when you're on the other side, did you see your past lives and did you find out sort of like where you, I, I know there's no before and after, but where you came from, you know, when you decided to come to earth, like where you were living, like what planet or what dimension or like, did you see yourself on other planets? Like, was that information given to you? That was partially, that was partially, there was parts of information. There was an understanding of concurrent. I think it's the right word or uh, the same way the feeling and the understanding is you and me and god and, but let's 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 go back to this planet again let's say that we're like octopuses and the octopus puts the tip of of a, of a one of his tentacles on planet earth and that's me but he can put another tentacle on another time space reality and another tentacle on the time space reality it's just so the octopus, all of us are like the octopus, and we have a few tentacles in a few different games, in a few different. So this was the feeling uh, and the explanation that I was having in there, because I was given at some point when he gave me an option of, of options. Okay, what do you want to do? Uh, where do you want to go? And then I chose back to the earth. But uh, yes, there was, and everything made sense. And how can I put this trying not to be arrogant? What I found is that all since my childhood, all my interests, all my, it's when you're in silence with you, all your intuitive thoughts, either was it about Egyptians or about alien civilizations or about the special star system or all of those intuitive uh, things that make you who you are, they're true. They're, they're all part of your existence. They're not in your mind by accident. Uh, so, uh, yes, I had been shown why, why was I interested in Egypt? Or why do I feel I've been in China? Or why do I feel I was in the 60s? Uh, or, I, or I still am? Or, uh, or the 90s or the 80s? Or how you can... Yes, I did get a little bit of that. Later, I did sessions um, with other people that are more experienced on that. Uh, but directly from the entity, I got reunited with all of them. I got to be all of them again. I got not just to be all of them again, but I got to feel when I put my focus on that, sub, on that life, on that existence, what I was looking for, and I, I already have it. When I put my focus on that one, I went there and I was there, and now I have it. And when I put my focus, and now my focus is on this one here. And so, yeah. I, so what you get a glimpse of is how you being the octopus, yes, you can have many parallel existences. And then information can come from anywhere. It's like channeling. It's like, it's like you can choose whatever you want to uh, bring your information. Which filters do you want to use? Which type of filter do you want to use uh, for the information that you want to receive? Because we're still going to interpret it as 
humans. But yeah, I, I learned a little bit. I learned that. When you were talking about the 60s, I got immediately that you were, had died in the 60s and that there was unfinished business. Did you see that? <laughs> no. Um, not were, you, the... were you alive in the 60s in another life? Uh, in a, yeah, in another life. Yeah, I think so. I didn't die so young. Um, but yeah, but I tell you a few of the ones that were very explicit. Mm -hmm. I was killed when sorcerers were sorcerers, when Merlins were Merlin. I was actually killed because I was making that. I was mixing portions. I was making mixing portions. And then I was taking the portions. And then I was speaking in public. And I was causing problems because I was, you know, basically, again, just like in the 60s, you were taking drugs and then you're speaking to people to enlighten themselves or to change the dominant system. Or that has been my nature in all my existences. So uh, not all my existence, sorry, sorry, let me refract. There's a few ones. There was a few uh, of the, the reincarnations that were still very active in me. So the, the reincarnations that can be useful for this life now, I'm in touch with them still. So I'm still part of them. So I can access them anytime because they're still related to what I'm doing now or what I was doing. Uh, why was I into punk music and into bringing the 60s back and into getting the system down and the rich people and the poor people? Why is this so unfair and this injustice and manifesting and manifestations on the streets? So uh, uh, I've been killed for being a sorcerer that was giving portions to people. I've been killed uh, by another pandemic, by a loss of air. Also got sick. I got, oh man, there were so many lives revealed to me. I was an actress in the 20s, an alcoholic drug actress. Uh, I was, what else? Uh, I have a dolphin counterparts that I met in person, which the odds are not for a guy like me that see, I see, I see thousands of dolphins. I live at sea, so I live at sea a lot of dolphins. But he confirmed to me that that dolphin, and when we had this moment there, it says that was you, that was part of you. I said, all right, I have a part of me that wants to see what is the dolphin life. Uh, it was many. Atlantia, yes, I was in Atlantis, and then I was one of the ones that flew to it, that didn't flew, ran away or, or saved myself to Egypt, was based in Egypt for a long time, and then uh, now is I've been working a lot with Sirius uh, because that's where it was explained I was coming from uh, lately, Sirius. Uh, there was so much. As you say, I can do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when my daughter was little, I think she was about 11, 12, probably about 12, we went to the beach one day. We lived up on the northern beaches, this huge beach called Palm Beach, and there was this pot of dolphins just cruising up and down um, the beach. And before I even stopped the car, she's opened the door and jumped out of the car, and she's like stripped her clothes off. And she's running down the beach and jumps in the water and she's trying to get to these dolphins. It's like the, the madness, like the madness, the, the passion, the, I don't know, I have, it's like my long lost family. I have to get to my family. And, um, and she couldn't reach them because as she would swim out, they would swim away and then she'd try and get them. And they, and I remember that everyone on the beach is screaming at her, just stay where you are and they'll come to you. Cause she was just frantic to get to these dolphins. And as I told you before, now she lives her life on the ocean. You know, she sails all around the place. So, again, she's got that connection to the sea and the ocean creatures and she's on the ocean. Did you, you know, you saw yourself as a dolphin counterpart. Did you find out why you had sort of spent your life on the ocean as a sailing as well, apart from that? I've done it many times. Mm -hmm. um, it's not my first time as a sailor. It's a passion, it's knowledge, it's experience. It's, uh, I, I don't want to sound arrogant. But it's acceptance, it's um, 
uh, yeah, it's accepting. If you like it, do it. You're here to have fun. You're here to do what you you're here to uh, what you like to do. So do it, do it. And then obviously, again, I'm not saying to go kill someone. Um, if that gives you joy, but again, we go back to the big picture, right? Then there's something else playing out that we cannot see. We cannot see it. So the question of the murderer and uh, again, the why am I bringing murderers again to this dualistic world? Because you cannot have hot without knowing what cold is. You cannot know what fair is if you don't know what's unfair. You cannot know what pain is if you don't know what love is. So again, uh, yeah. Do you think you'll stay on the ocean as, for as long as possible doing what you're doing? Uh, uh, no, uh, but I know I'll I'll um, I'll be close to where I can surf too because I love surfing too. I mm -hmm. surf each time that I can because it's just another magical. I think it's one of the best experiences any human can do on the planet is surfing. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that yeah. you're a big fan of uh, Abraham Hicks teachings. I am. When you found those teachings, did Esther's explanation or Abraham through Esther really explain what you had experienced on the other side or? Uh, okay, and the same goes for many, 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 many teachings. channels, teachings, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So the first year that I, when I left the hospital and I got home and, and I was, I would take long walks into nature because that's what I was feeling well and, and I was in nature. So I started, uh, uh, the entity that I had the, the whole conversation up there, I wanted to carry on asking questions and i wanted to carry on asking for guidance because mm -hmm. um, okay i had a heart attack because i was still broke i was still living off borrowed money i was i was flooded with gratitude for having one more chance first of all mm -hmm. and, and, and i didn't even mention here but the biggest thing is how grateful i was i was just the fact, and I, I do this exercise with myself every morning, I do a gratitude exercise to bring me to that perspective again every morning to remind me of that day, to remind me that I wanted to be here, I got, I managed to be here, just that it's enough to make me smile. I said, okay, <laughs> here I am, I made it again, it's the morning again, here we go, another day. Um, but the, when I would go to nature and I would ask for questions, I had uh, that light would show up in the, some way. I would feel the energy of the light. And then I noticed that if, because I wanted to listen from it, and we were there, I was just feeling the experience. So in the beginning, it was just in silence, feeling its vibration again, and I could, I could understand the answers. And then one day I tried to speak because I wanted to ask a question. And when I start speaking, it's not me. It's the entity giving me the answer of the question that I want to put. But I'm thinking about the question while that energy, that energy just comes and takes over my mouth and just answers blah, 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 what I'm thinking that I want to ask next. And it's just mm -hmm. answering beforehand. Yeah, and, yeah. and I realized that I'm blah, 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 so, oh, wow great boom let's go so i that's i had the first year i was in constant contact with the entity i would let it come through me and speak if i was in the presence of people that had honest questions based with honest beliefs and openness it was easy to bring the entity and speak and channel and, and do the whole thing so that's how i found out about that I didn't know Esther, I didn't know anything about channeling, I didn't know Abraham, I didn't know anything. So I started digging up information mm -hmm. and I came across um, the Seth uh, books, Seth, and Seth, Seth mm -hmm. materials, yes. Which until today, um, I love Esther, I love Abraham, I love many other uh, teachers that I gratitude because they always clarify a bit uh, beyond. But the fact 
that they bring the closeness to what it is that is life. So, uh, set material is still my favorite because it comes with cert certainty and objectivity that I think is very necessary for people to, to flip the switch. I love Abraham because uh, she's fun and she throws in, uh, can keep humor. You know, Abraham, it's just, it's just an amazing job and an amazing source of teachers. And, and, and the fact that Abraham themselves replied that they were here continue to pick up on, on the job of Seth, to continue mm -hmm. uh, Seth's teaching. Uh, again, that was that you create your own reality, Seth's teachings. So when I read Seth, and I saw that that person was verbalizing the right way to say what I've been through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was what captivated me so much on set to say, mm -hmm. this guy can explain what I've seen. Exactly. This exactly. guy can explain what I've been through. He mm -hmm. knows about it. And I was like, look, people. And then I found Abraham, which was the same reaction. Say, hey, people, okay, even if you don't want to hear me, but listen. What this lady is saying, it's like that. I can yeah. vouch for this. I yeah. know it's like this. She is talking the truth. Listen to this. Yeah, yeah. So the way that I got into Esther and, and that's why I love Abraham. Sorry, we shouldn't put it on Esther. Thank you, Esther, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but the way that the teachings of Abraham uh, come and many, many all others that I follow and that I've done sessions with and then I courses because then when i found out that this was a thing so that entity of light coming through me and speaking uh, was actually a thing uh -huh. uh, there was a relief for me yeah it was such a relief so you I'm saw other crazy. people channeling and you thought oh all right i'm not crazy yeah mm -hmm. yeah this is a thing and then understanding all directions where it comes from but then in the end the message is usually the same too mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. my biggest joy on the channeling uh, uh, and, and the teachers that we have now is the feeling of first it takes me again to that space because it is like that it is like uh, it is like that we mm -hmm. are non-physical and we go to blissfulness and it's beautiful and it's awesome but then we also want to know something else and we want to know more uh, the, the, the thing she says of you can't get it wrong and you'll never get it because you'll never get it done. That's true. It's, it's even when I was there with the entity and we're like, okay, that's done. That was it. And feeling blissfully, it's the best feeling in the world, mm -hmm. which is what we want is to feel good. But then within seconds, the, there's a thing for, okay, what's next? Okay. What are we going to explore next? Where are we going to go now? So it kicks in again the in no, it's not in satisfaction but it's it can be seen as excitement too. so there's many teachers that i've started following when they resonated with the experience that i had for example from bashar bashar yeah uh, love bashar because he also do i went through all of that thing of distinguishing the this alien species with that alien species and with that alien species and with this alien species no i my focus is not on that one i'm not denying or rejecting any i love to meet some i see a lot of phenomena when i'm out at sea i know there's many species but i go to the core of my interest which is on thoughts to things so Yes, sorry, but to, for you to experience your reality, what do you want to experience? I want to experience being on the beach then. Let's carry on. You tell yeah, me. Yeah, how you create your reality. In one of the last shows that I did with Frances Ray Key, she started channeling after her mother died in 2010, and she brought through four books, which I find are, I call them mandatory reading for anyone on a spiritual yeah, path. Them. And she goes into what I've heard you talk about. I think this is one of the reasons I reached out to you about how thoughts create these vibrational spheres, she called them. And these spheres hold the uh, vibrational frequency of a specific belief or thought. And I, I think I heard you say on another show, you sort of alluded to, to it today, 
that um, that but depending on what you choose to think, you'll pick a thought rather. You'll pick a thought to like indulge in, engage in, and um, to feed. To feed, yeah, to feed. You got to it, feed it. it feed it exactly. It, It'll feed it. it will feed you, and you will feed it. And the more you focus in that way, the the bigger this sphere becomes. The more you feed this sphere, and the bigger this sphere becomes, then the more available it is to the collective. And I, I think that in those channelings, it's been the clearest um, articulation of that. I'll send it to you. It's it, it's beautiful, and we discussed it in that show. We had Lisa. We had Lisa Simone on, who was Nina Simone's daughter, who had voiced. She had voiced the um, the audio book, um, some of the audio book for book one. Oh, that's beautiful. I'd yeah, but them. but these teachings, I think you'll enjoy them. I not love be- audio books. Not because you'll learn something new, but it's just like you revisit what you know, sort of in a, in another way, in a new way. I think. Yeah, I think you'll love them. Well. I will, and I would really like to, because I do, and that's why I like to read. I, I read uh, since then. I've read. I've read a lot of channel. I completely, uh, since my NDE, uh, I've done a lot of you know coaching and personal development as well because I wanted to improve my life, and I understood the thoughts changed my life. Um, so I wanted to better my thoughts and learn more in all areas. But mostly, when I've uh, that reconnection the satisfaction and it was like i could vouch you don't have to vouch for abraham nobody has to vouch for 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 bashar or for or for all the beautiful great teachings that we have i did i did this work with the pleiadians and, and wendy kennedy which i love with, yeah, yeah with and now i've been following a lady that i didn't know uh, that brings also because i saw it on jeff mara and what's her and name? I, Sarah Landon. Oh, Sarah. Yep, Sarah Landon. Mm-hmm. I, the, the council. She brings the, the council. council. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so when I see the labels, because that re, there, there was a moment that I could choose a name to the entity that I was chanting. There was a moment I could choose a name. But I've also on my and in, in, in the I've had an understanding of filters and how. To filter the message, how to pass through, how to reach a different public, how. So again, I don't want to sound arrogant because I don't want to, but there's sometimes there's no other ways to say things. I didn't need a name. Maybe I'll maybe I'll one day I'm still curious about to give him a name. Maybe I'll find out and give him a name because sometimes I need to give him a name. I say him, but it um, I don't know yet. Because as long as the message, the message passes through, as long as the message is passed on, then I didn't care so much. So when I had a question and I got the answer, then I was like, so I don't need to give you a name? I don't need to. <laughs> well, you don't need to give it a name if it's for you. But if you put yourself out there as a teacher, because this is what I do in my work, you know, I accelerate, accentuate, accentuate the New World Teachers and um as humans, we latch on to something, you know, we latch on to labels, we latch on to identity. And that's how we relate through identity. And so when you give someone and like, like Sarah gave the, 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 the council, or um, the, the ninth Palladian, you know, there, everyone yeah. has these different names, like Esther calls it Abraham. But from her understanding, um, that was what she was given, she thought she was speaking to one guy. You know, and it was the same with Frances and her mother. She thought she was speaking to her mother. And yet when the information kept flowing, she realized that there was this enormous team of entities or consciousness that was flowing through to her that was speaking, that was channeling the books. And it no longer became her mother speaking to her. It was like this... It's the same with my guides. I irreverently called them the mob when I was young because I just felt like there was just this mob of beings that were faceless, no identity, just, you know, no name, no identity. So I just gave them the name, the mob. And then later in life, I called them blissful beings because I had a business called Blissful Beings. And one day they said to me when I kept saying, who are you? Who are you? What's your name? What's your name? And they didn't give me a name. They said, well, who do you think the blissful beings are? 
And I went, oh, yeah, I could call you blissful beings. So the name is irrelevant, but it's only relevant when you're putting yourself out there and then people want to attach a label to your guidance. You know, you've got to give it a name. I mean, you can call it the entity. Paul Selleck calls it the guides. You know, like it, you can. It can I, I got it. I, yeah. I, 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 and I got that from, from because then, because then, uh, I said, well, even when I actually channeled with 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 close people, people that the the, the times that I managed to do it directly, uh, because there's another thing that we need to put um, the belief. If the person believes, then it just makes everything easier. Absolutely, and and when you give them some fancy name, there is more belief there. Like oh, she's speaking to the ninth Palladian Council from the. <laughs> constellation serious you know the yeah. bigger the name yeah. the more the belief it. and i have often thought over the years do i give them a more elaborate name <laughs> so that yeah. that creates more belief amongst you know if you just say i'm talking me the personality karen like well who are you you're nobody but if you say that you're talking to some council from the galactic this and that or the galactic federation People are like, yeah. ooh, we have to listen to them. <laughs> so, yeah, the Galactic Federation of Light or the Federation of Light or the Great White Brotherhood. Uh, some people call it God. It's all God, really. Yeah, names, labels. Mm. Exactly. So uh, uh, it's whatever filter. And I know I need to find one because because I've reached that conclusion. Well, when I was with people that didn't really care, they knew they were getting a message from the other side. And the messages, obviously, they were pure and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, when, when you feel the information is valid and then people even forget the name. But as you're saying, well, if, exactly. If, if exactly. you're putting out there, if, 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 of course, it needs a name. Everything yeah. is a label. That's what we do. We label everything. We, we label everything. Label some things. We even, have to. Even say. <laughs> I remember Jane, because yes. Seth was the first, one of the first books I ever picked up. Jane or Seth was saying to Jane Roberts that Seth was the name that um, she was in a past life or he was in a past life. It was, it was when they were together physically and that's how they knew each other. So, so that's the name that he gave her or to they the gave her. Connection. Yeah. And, you know, it wasn't really the name of the entity or the, consciousness streaming through jane roberts but seth was the name and so when you say seth i've like got it immediately because i've identified exactly. the name with the information right exactly darling one what an adventure look i would love to get you back into the inner sanctum next year to the group and really unpack the whole thoughts sure. create things and maybe you could do some channeling for us how do you feel about I'd that love to. yeah uh yeah yeah i would love to and um, I feel I'm in the stage with the channeling and I'm going to be very honest. It's not, you know, you know, like, like uh, Bashar is not sweet. You know, the mm -hmm. way that Bashar doesn't make yeah. it smooth. Yeah. Kurt and to the point. Kurt, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I found that when that comes through me, it, uh -huh. it will tell you. Yeah. And there's no softeners. There's no yeah. softeners. So what yeah. I found, yeah. what yeah. I found that I needed to work on, and that's when I started engaging in in channeling courses, was because I said uh, because I was like, holy, I need to, I need to moderate this. How or do I? Or do or, you? Oh, exactly. Or you know, I it's it's only because... the human mind that wants to be liked. You know. Um, yeah. Because, because I found the when... same. I found the same, but I didn't call it channeling. <laughs> I would just. I would just, because I don't, my guide said to me, we don't call it channeling because they said to me, you know, Jesus never said he was cat channeling. He always said the father and I are one. And so it's kind of like, do you channel all the time or do you stop to channel and then tune it? You know, eventually you're channeling all the time. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah. And when I would, these words would fly out of my mouth, they, 
they were they were like really direct and people yeah. were insulted. Some people yes. were yes. insulted, but I get it. And I used to think, oh my God, I have to, I have to dumb this down. I have to pretty it up. I have to say things differently, thinking I was saying I it, but, but I'm not saying it. Yeah, yeah. I have to apologize. I almost have to <laughs> I know say exactly I'm what sorry you mean. if I was too rude, if I was too direct to the mm-hmm. point. Mm-hmm. But also when I get myself into that stage, my my intention was I hope. As, as much information as possible come through so right. you know just go for it just so for it. Mm-hmm. that's what i was trying to yeah, learn you, with myself does my mood is influencing how this yeah, it comes or not you can't edit it you can't edit it you've just got to let because paul paul selick says the same it's funny when he's channeling and the guides will say paul is interfering in the transmission because he's judging you know he's judging what's coming out of his mouth like don't say it like that don't you know you can't say that and then it's like get out of the way paul just let us talk <laughs> Yes, yeah. yes, which yeah. is beautiful, and that's why, and that's why I still learn through other, and that's why I like to see from other filters. That's why I love right. to see other channelers. That's right. why I love to, because I can skip very easily to the part of how much of that reality I've seen, mm-hmm. and how much of that uh, I, I'm searching for the information that I wanted when I was already on the other side of the veil and other questions. So I, I'm sorry. I, and I find that I always either have reminders from different things or have um, practical day-to-day reminders that we take from all of them because, because we need them, because we are, because again, and then I'm thinking again, then I find myself sometimes, why am I again trying to get out of my body so much? Why am I not enjoying my physicality? Why am I not doing what I chose to come here? Why am I not riding a bicycle right now? Why am I not <laughs> diving? Why am I spending so much time thinking on what I know I'll be there eventually? Well, it, it was interesting when you sp- said at the beginning of this, you said that um, you were told that everything that you were experiencing on the other side, you could bring to earth. So that was yeah. the message, you know, like we don't have to die. That was the message of my first book, which was called Return to Love. Uh, we don't have to die to return to love. We can bring that heaven feeling. We can bring that heavenly experience into this earth experience and return to love while we're still physical. Yeah. So I think yeah. that that's, you know, so many people who listen to NDDs, they're like, I can't wait to die because then I'll feel good. And the message is you don't need to die to feel good. You know, feeling good's available now. Where are you focusing? Where do you place your attention? What? vibrational sphere are you tapping into are you tapping into the sphere of anger or are you tapping into the sphere of bliss yeah exactly mm-hmm. exactly and you are creating your reality and you are you creating that. it uh-huh exactly exactly you are it's been such a blessing that. thank you thank so you, much thank you thank you and i would come anytime really i would really, really like to get to know you better too i will now because all of this happened very quickly i didn't know jeff mara I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know you. So there's a lot of things happening, which I love it, and I really want to dig deeper because it's fun. Because we can make it happen. I know. Did Jeff find you, or did you find Jeff? Because I think Jeff has sort of put you. Like I found you through Jeff, and other people have found you through Jeff, and they're putting you on their shows, and it's all starting to sort of unravel now. Like Jeff's yes. been instrumental in getting you out there, really. Jeff reached out. Jeff reached out because. Um, Did he find you on NDE radio or something? On an F, uh, an F, a Facebook group okay. um, <laughs> that I had joined about uh, NDEs. And mm-hmm. there was people with NDEs sharing uh, mm-hmm. experiences and comparing notes, basically. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, perspectives. And then the understanding perspectives. And then that helps us too because we see what the point was or when a a system was being used just to deliver the same message or just to make us understand. So a lot of things get clarified when you go through, um, for me too, you know, for understanding uh, the ciphering, a lot of the stuff there was not even spoken yet because what I discussed with you is different than what I discussed with somebody else. So Absolutely. Absolutely. I had Jeff on my show. I had Jeff on my show. I want to see that one. I want to see that show. He said to me, he said to me, because he had me on his show, and he said to me, 
uh, I don't have any, you know, I haven't had any experience. I don't have anything to say. And I said, I don't believe you. I think that what you're doing <laughs> is amazing. I'd like to honor you and I'd like to hear your story. And so he did, he came on the show and, and spoke about his story and um, yeah. And, and people have said to me, yeah, you know, you listen to all these different podcasts, the same person, but you always hear something different in each podcast because they ask different questions and there's a different focus in many of the podcasts. And yeah, it's good to, it's good to hear them from all different perspectives. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But thank you. Thank you've you got, very much. You've got more work to do in this lifetime as a teacher, even though you've been killed many other lifetimes as a speaker and a teacher. Yeah. You're back out I'm there again. I'm abrupt. I think my my way to teach is uh, I, what was the word to describe it? Did you say crude? Because my I, I, English Kurt. is not my first language. So Kurt, Kurt, I know, yeah, Kurt. Kurt. Mm -hmm. Kurt. It's when mm -hmm. you have to go to the point, and you're not worried with feelings, right? I direct found out that to the point. Direct. Blunt. My, blunt yes, is another blunt. blunt. Yes, I am <laughs> blunt, and when it's speaking, it's blunt, and yeah, and like then, Bashar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I found that that Bashar does is the same thing. That thing, there's no time to joke around. If you're gonna have that window open, you better say what you have to say, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have exactly. To make it useful. I love it because it does um, bring clarifications to listen to other uh, teachers. I know what I saw. I know what I've been through. I know. I know what I've seen. I know what I've been through, and it's always good to have. Um, but I also have a physical life. So yes, I'm still human. <laughs> Thank you again. We keep, I keep trying to end the show. We just keep I don't know, but we can't. I'm oh, sorry. And I'm sorry. Okay. We'll speak later. No, I'm not sorry, but we'll Big speak later. Big love to time. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. How beautiful to chat with Sal about his experience. He's learning to articulate it in English because English is not his first language. So putting these concepts, even though he's listened to many channelers articulate it, you know, in English, still organizing your thoughts and bringing it through in a way that is um, understandable to others, it's a little bit of a challenge. I found that too when I was first listening to this work, there was this knowing in me. I remember somebody sent me a CD of Esther over 20 years ago they sent it to me in the but it was before downloading and stuff like that they sent me a cd and i listened to it and i thought oh my god she's articulating my knowing perfectly it's like trying to find words to your knowing like you know how life works but then you've got to find words to try and explain it to somebody it can be challenging and i have to say i've mastered that art when i speak now it's effortless and it flows so beautifully and i'm channeling all the time and as i said to sal it's it just becomes part of me. It's no longer do I need to sit and tune in and channel. It just it just flows effortly as me. Like Jesus said to me in my third eye, in my mind's eye, in my communication with him, with what I call him Sananda in his um, spiritual perspective. He said, I never, I never said I was channeling when I was teaching. He said, I always claimed that I and the Father are one, meaning God and I are one and that everyone has that access to this exalted wisdom all the time. You just need to shift your focus from who you think you are as the little me that can't do it. Oh, no, I don't. I can't do that. I can't do that. I don't know how to be psychic. I don't know how to channel. Uh, I can't do that. It, you know, people have gifts and I don't have these gifts. You know, the stories we come up with in order to limit ourselves or dumb ourselves down or deny our magnificence, deny the divinity within us. The stories that we come up with, I hear them all the time. And you know what? I can understand them because I had the same stories about myself. So I get it. I really get it. You know, we just need to move those stories out of the way and let the energy flow. It's like you turn the tap on, then you turn it on faster and faster and faster. And the energy just streams through you. It just flows like a fast flowing tap. It's beautiful. And the words just come. And um, as Esther says, Abraham knows how to articulate, you know, how to speak in the English language, knows words much better than she does. And I find the same, like I always thought of myself as not very good with words, was I was dyslexic as a kid and I couldn't read. And, and yet when I'm speaking and teaching, there are words that I'm saying, I don't even know the meaning of them. It's like, wow, that's a great word. Oh, I like that. 
yeah just let it flow we can all do it let it flow let your own higher self your own divinity your own exalted wisdom who you are your true self flow through you effortlessly but yeah i loved sal did you love sal i just i loved him i thought he was great i just yeah yeah he's yeah he, we were saying at the end and, and we had more chats this is my daughter i was telling him about my daughter's adventures out to sea on the boats and um, this is her where is she she's up on near the Whit Sundays, i think on the mast of the boat and uh, so for people listening on audio you'll have to go to the video platforms odyssey rumble BitChute, and youtube and you'll see the picture behind me is my crazy adventurous uh, ocean loving daughter sitting on a mask pointing out to sea and Sal was telling me that he's in the States. He's been based in the States, in the, U in the US lately, and he's taking a boat from somewhere to somewhere, Carolina, North Carolina to somewhere else. I've forgotten already. And then he's going to the Bahamas. And I'm like, ah, sounds good. And he said during lockdown, he was taking a boat, captaining a boat to the Bahamas. And, and he said that when the news was coming out and all the zombies were walking around, he said, oh, I know what zombies look like. I think I'll stay in the Bahamas and sit on the beach. <laughs> I thought that sounded like a good idea during lockdown but I thought he lived in Spain I said to him I thought you live in Spain he said oh yes says that on my Facebook page but I, I he used to be based in Spain but you know he takes boats all over the world he's kind of like a cosmic traveler traveling the world spreading his light wherever he goes Captain Hart beautiful 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 all righty. Well, Debs is coming up in a couple of days into the Inner Sanctum. I said to Sal that I'd love him to come in next year. I haven't started booking in people for next year yet, but we'll get him in next year, find a space where he's not sailing a boat and get him doing some channeling, get him practicing the channeling in front of a crowd, in front of a group of people. So join our, our Inner Sanctum and um, be a part of uh, helping people like Sal and, you know, find an audience because, uh, after the Jeff Mara podcast, yeah, he said he's so busy, people reaching out to him all the time, wanting him to share his NDE. There are so many podcasts out there that specifically talk about the afterlife and NDEs. And I get it because I remember when I first started talking about some of the most viewed, I think Nancy Rhines was one of my first NDEs. And um, I think she's like about 60 or 70,000, you know, views on the show I did with Nancy, but that was years ago. But I noticed that, you know, wow, people are really into this sort of afterlife NDE, near-death experience conversation. So there are so many podcasts out there now that are talking, that are showcasing NDEs, which is really beautiful. Sal was saying, I said, how did Jeff find you? And he, she, he said that he found him on, on a, in a Facebook group, um, people discussing their NDEs, because Jeff does the show every day. I don't do it every day. So I guess he's always looking for people to talk to. But um yeah, people are reaching out to me left, right and centre these days. I've got more people than I can handle to come on the show because I only do the show once a week. Uh, but, yeah, there's a lot going on next year. It's busy already. So Debs is coming in. She channels uh, a group that she calls the teachers or the star teachers. She was the hypnotherapist in Alien Abduction Answers by John Yost, and um, she's coming in to meet us and we'll do some channelling with uh, Debs in the inner sanctum this weekend so if you want to join us please do it's free or by donation i always appreciate your donations it used to be a by subscription like ten dollars per time under ten dollars was probably about seven or eight dollars for the people in the states around ten dollars well it was just under ten dollars for people in australia but uh, yeah i do appreciate any donations that you want to give for the work that i put out into the world and what else is happening? Lots happening. I've got the Ultimate Star Being uh, conference coming up this weekend. I'll be chatting for that. That's a five-day conference. I thought it was free. It is not free, but it is not expensive. I think it's only about $80, $88 for five days for the conference with 55 teachers from all over the world. Amazing, amazing value, really, and a lot more happening. If you want to keep up to date on what I've got going on, and I do post a lot on my Facebook page, but I also have a group on Facebook called the Awakening Empowerment Network. I post a lot of the shows on there and sign up to the newsletter because I do send out this information through email. All right. Big love to all of you. Thanks again for listening and watching and 
sharing the shows and leaving your comment and the subscribing and all that good stuff and rating the shows. If you're listening on platforms where you can rate the show, I would really appreciate it if you do, because that always helps the algorithms share the shows as well. And remember, if you haven't already, check out the book, Awakened, <laughs> Awakened by Death. It's got some fabulous stories in there. Love you all. Bye for now.